a neural style transfer. So in this section, we're going to have a look at what is neural style transfer, um, a popular Keras framework for style transfer, and some advanced techniques such as multiple style transfer. And in the final video, I'm going to talk about a thorough explanation of how style transfer works. So this is going to be very technical. Let's start with the first video, introduction to neural style transfer. So in this video, we're going to have a look at uh, what is neural style transfer, how does it work, and how it is possible to transfer style from one image to another one. And then we're going to have a quick overview of the optimization phase. So what is neural style transfer? So it's actually a very simple and very fun concept. So you just have one content image and one style image, and you're going to combine the two. So you're going to have an output whose content match the content content of the content image and whose style match the style of the style image. So what do you need to make it work? So we need VGG network first. So an image net VGG network. You need a style image of course and you need a content image and and you need of course the algorithm of style transfer. So how does it work? I'm not going into much detail for this video because I think it's going to be a bit too much. But roughly on the left side, you have the style workflow. On the middle side, you have the image generation. So the combination image, the output image uh, generation. So the workflow. And uh, on the right side, you're going to have your content workflow. So just the way it works. So you take your VGD, train it on ImageNet, or you download the weight somewhere. Um, you run your content image through VGG. You get your features. And then you do the same for the style image. You run through VGG. And then you compute the correlations uh, of the features. That will give you your style feature. So this is actually a key point that researcher in deep learning found is that uh, the feature of VGG, when you compute the correlation, RAM matrices to be exact, uh, you end up having a style uh, features. So, and then once you have both your feature and your style features of the content and the style image, uh, you're going to have an iterative thing. So you start with a random image, so for example, a Gaussian noise, I mean, anything with random pixels. So this is going to be in the bottom, in the middle, on the, on the slide. Uh, this is called X. And then uh, you're going to run X or VGD and you will get the features of X, okay? And you will get the style features uh, of X2. And then you're going to compare the style feature of your random image to the style feature of your style image. And you're going to compare the features of X with the features of your content image. When, you, when I say compare, it's that you're going to have a loss. So for example, some of the square or something. And then with this loss, you're going to optimize it to gradient descent. And that's it. And, and your total loss is just a linear combination of your loss associated to the content and the loss associated to your style. So you can weight them. For example, here it's weighted by alpha or beta. And that's it. This is how style transfer works. So the optimization phase, how do we do with gradient descent and so on? So here we have one content image uh, on the top right and uh, one style image on the top left. And then we're going to have an output image that looks like this. Uh, this looks cool. But how does it work for the optimization step? So at the beginning, this is what we have, our first iteration. So at the beginning, like I wrote, the generated image looks like a simple texture overlap in between the content and the style. Okay, so we have a current loss value. So this is, like I said, it's a content loss plus a style loss. Then of course we have zero improvement because we've just started. Then with iteration number two, well, we're going, we have a improvement of 52%. We're decreasing the loss with the gradient descent algorithm. Uh, and then we're more epochs, the program gradually learns the color and the pattern. And then after some points, see the improvement is dropping 7%. So at some point after iteration like 10 or maybe 15, 20 or something, the improvement will be actually pretty low. 
and uh, it will not evolve much after that. So we have a convergence criteria and then we can stop the algorithm at this point.